Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2021 uh, TIJRJ annual lecture. So, the, for the International Journal of Restorative Justice, uh, we're supported by Eleven, our publisher. Uh, this is a second annual lecture, unfortunately, that we have to hold online. Uh, last year, I had called it unusual when uh, Jennifer did hers. Uh, unfortunately, it has become somehow normalized, which is really sad. Um, not so long ago, we would be in some beautiful location at an international conference. Uh, two years ago, we were in Perth in Australia, uh, listening to William Wood. But what a difference uh, this whole pandemic has done, has been, has made. made. Um, now I'm in my own flat here in wintry Glasgow. <laughs> However, this also means that being online, it allows for a very diverse and wider audience to join for speakers. Uh, we can really choose speakers rather than take those that are available there. And so there are some silver linings. Um, anyway, I will just go over some practicalities. Then Ivo will introduce the journal and the lecture. Um, by giving you some background and explain some of the upcoming developments of the journal. I will then introduce our speaker, Antoine Garapon. Um, he will then speak for about 40, 45 minutes. I might interrupt him after uh, when he reaches about 40 minutes. Um, and then I will uh, introduce our two respondents, uh, Claudia Mazzucato and Kent Roach, uh, to respond to Antoine's lecture. Um, then we'll have time for. Um, Q&A session, 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 sorry, uh, which will, with the help of Marlies, Ivo and I will lead. Um, and I will continue keeping time and make sure we can finish within the two hours allocated for today's event. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the number of people joining and in uh, order to have a meaningful discussion, we'll ask you to all mute yourself uh, while our lecturer and respondents speak. Uh, and we ask you to, we, we welcome you to put uh, a num uh, your questions and comments in the chat, um, but we will then call you up to come and um, say them yourself. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, we might regroup some questions if they do address a common uh, thread or a common theme or idea in if uh, depending on uh, how many questions there are, etc., to make sure that everybody has time to speak. Um, to remind everyone, this lecture is being recorded uh, and it should uh, be um, available to all you who have attended and registered, uh, but will also normally uh, be uh, available on the YouTube channel of Eleven, uh, our publisher. Uh, and of course, uh, Antoine's lecture should appear as uh, the annual lecture in our journal in volume five, so in 2022 at some point. So that's me. Thank you very much all for being here. Uh, Ivo, I'll give you the floor now. Thank you, Estelle, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to each of you, depending on where you are at this moment. Uh, we are very happy to have so many people here in the room today um, and I, yeah, I warmly welcome you as well. All, also on behalf of my co-editor Estelle and our editorial assistant uh, Marlies Stale and the whole editorial board and the international advisory board. We are a big group of people working in this um, international journal of restorative justice. It is indeed an extraordinary lecture as Estelle already mentioned, usually we do this annual lecture physically connected link to an international um, conference, but you understand that this is not possible now anymore. Maybe in the future we can uh, take that up again, that scenario. So um, the lecture will be, as Estelle already mentioned, will be normally published uh, in the beginning of next year in our international journal. But still, uh, for those who might not be familiar with the International Journal, let me say a few words to introduce uh, the journal. We are an international journal. That's important for us, I think. It means um, we really try to reach um, all regions in the world, and we try to cope with language difficulties all the time and translation and so on. That's important for us, I think. We, we like diversity in that sense as well. Um, we are an academic journal. Um, 
publishing double-blind peer-reviewed articles, but also still other contributions. We are an academic journal, I would say, in the, for me, true sense of the word. So we are not, we are not retired or we are not plucked up ourselves um, in, in academia um, ivory towers or so, but we uh, really want to connect a lot to what's going on in society, to needs in the justice systems and in society uh, at large. So I think it is important and we try to contribute through our journal to that, to, to, to build this kind of partnerships between research and practice. Um, so we indeed cherish the value of participation and how we do that in this journal is not only by publishing um, articles, but also by publishing a section, what we call notes from the field, uh, where we usually uh, invite a person to write about a new development, can be in practice, uh, can be in policy making, but always relevant in an international, uh, at the international level. And then we also usually ask two people to reply, to respond to these notes from the field. So in order to enhance um, interaction, dialogue, participation. On top of that, we have also a section, what we call conversations. That is where we um, publish an interview in a more personal way, let's say uh, with someone who has done um, well, remarkable things in the field, in the broad fields of restorative justice, be it in research, theory, practice, or uh, policy making. So, and then finally, we have also a section of book reviews, of course, and um, we try to be as complete as possible. And I think we are able so far to cover uh, all the important books internationally uh, that are published in the field of restorative justice, not only in English, but also books that are being published in other uh, languages. That's it for me to introduce the International Journal. I hope you enjoy the journal and we are always looking forward to receiving your ideas, suggestions on how we can improve this work in the International Journal of Restorative Justice. And we also hope, of course, that you will contribute yourself to the journal in writing pieces and in subscribing, of course, to the journal. Thanks a lot. Over to Estelle again. Okay, thank you, Ivo. Um, okay, um, now I have the honor of introducing our distinguished guest or speaker for uh, this unusual 2021 uh, annual lecture, Antoine Garapon. Uh, his lecture is entitled Justice Caught Between Being and Having. Um, he was born in 1952. Uh, he served as a juvenile justice for many years, uh, juvenile ju judge, sorry. Um, for many years and now teaches at Sciences Po Law School in Paris. Um, he has written widely on judicial issues, uh, legal philosophy, uh, comparative legal cultures. Um, I counted about 30 books uh, when I looked him up, uh, but uh, they include among others, uh, and the titles are in French, uh, Bien jugé, Essai sur le rituel judiciaire, which he wrote, he co-wrote with Ian uh, Yanis uh, Papadopoulos in 96, Jugé en Américain en France, uh, Culture Juridique Française et Common Law on, uh, in 2003, which both were published by Odi Jacob. Uh, his latest book um, with Jean Lasseg is entitled uh, Justice Digital, uh, Révolution Graphique and Rupture Anthropologique, and that was published in 2018. Uh, he's on the editorial board of the academic journal uh, Esprit. Um, he was a member of the Commission on Sexual Abuse in the Catholic uh, Church in France, but he'll talk about that, and holds a weekly radio program, Esprit de Justice, on France Culture, which is quite something. Uh, Antoine, uh, you have the floor, you have 40 minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for the invitation and, and, and I feel deeply honored to, to, to speak in such a distinguished audience, an, an international audience. Um, well, my, what I, I would like to do in this paper is precisely, as you mentioned, I was a member of the, of the, the group, um, independent 
group uh, working on, on uh, sexual abuse in Catholic Church. And I, I was also involved in some, some transitional uh, justice experiences in, in the world, uh, in the Balkans, in Central America, in the Middle East. And, and I'd like to reflect uh, on those experiences I was involved in and to reflect them through a, a basic distinction to me, uh, which is the, the, the distinction between being and having. Uh, being and having, uh, which is not, and, and my assumption uh, is that restorative justice is more concerned by, uh, concerned with being, whereas conventional criminal justice is more focused on having. And uh, it's the distinction between being and having is not that common in, in legal philosophy, in philosophy, uh, general philosophy. Uh, so, and, and I will ask for mercy for, uh, yeah, and, and uh, some clemency for the, from the audience and even more doing that in English, whereas in perhaps these words are not that meaningful in English as they are in, in French. So um, all the history of Western uh, justice has been linked with, uh, with uh, the assumption that justice has something to do with uh, uh, having. And the um, conception of justice in Athens or in Rome is that uh, justice has to convert uh, issues related to being, life, honor, uh, politics uh, into solutions that uh, could equate them according to common to common benchmarks it's exterior to relationship so uh, I, and it's very it's quite uh, interesting that uh, the justice courts uh, appeared in history uh, at the same time as currencies it means to uh, at the same time to the possibility of uh, quantifying so um, it's very interesting to, to, to reflect, for example, that the idea um, uh, that life uh, itself must be given a price, and, and, and this price uh, used to, uh, to give a name to currencies, by, by the way. So <clears throat> there is modernity is a current process of commodification of everything, and uh, uh, including justice. And uh, Montesquieu noticed that in the spirit of laws, he noticed that um, uh, the commerce produces in men a certain feeling for exact justice. So uh, uh, if we go back in legal philosophy, there is two kinds of justice. We usually say there are two kinds of justice, distributive and retributive, and, and both are based on the idea of equivalences of proportionality. It means to having. And uh, 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 today, there's, there's a major trend in legal philosophy, such as uh, from Rawls and the liberal approach or uh, liberal theories of justice are uh, attracted by economy to some extent, uh, such as the utilitarianism and, uh, and um, obviously neoliberalism and the digital uh, era uh, exacerbates this tendency. So uh, the aim of justice, the aims of justice was, were understood as to balance the rights of everyone, which is a task associated with distribution, separation, and stability. So, and, and the, the, the major symbol of justice is a symbol of lady justice with a scale to measure weights. So, uh, and, and this, this uh, organization of, of the idea of justice around having has something to do uh, uh, for a, um, a kind of a basic reluctance towards being. Being is confused. He, being is based on irrationalities, on beliefs, on intuitions. And so 
being is quite unmanageable. So um, the good thing with quantification, the good thing with, with having is that it gives form to reality through measures. Uh, is, and, and, and behind the opposition between being and having, there are other oppositions, such as uh, 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 the opposition between intuition and form, uh, between the undetermined and the determined, between the unlimited and the circumscribed. So, um, uh, so I, I, I noted that in, in English as well as in French, we used to say that uh, um, people, we have rights, we do have rights. And, and uh, uh, so the rights themselves has something to do with, with having and, and justice perhaps more uh, um, is, is uh, um, yes, linked to this, uh, this approach. So in this paper, I'd like to, uh, I'd like, I'd like, would like to argue that um, even if uh, though legal institutions are concerned primarily with having the dimension of being, of uh, uh, being uh, of what people and cities are actually, and not what they uh, not only have, has not been eradicated and cannot be. The call for restorative justice can be understood as an end put to this seemingly infinite expansion of uh, quantitative justice and the demand to pay more attention uh, to being. So I, I will base my paper on two situations uh, again I was involved in, which is first mass atrocities uh, on one hand, um, for which there was a lot of transitional justice obviously, and on the other end uh, on uh, widespread sexual, sexual violence, which I think is a major uh, issue today for our societies, a major issue, um, as we saw for the Catholic Church, but not only. Uh, there is a kind of cultural revolution in the US and in France, the two countries I know a bit. Um, I, I, if we think about the Me Too movement, it's, it's exactly that. It's, it's uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, rebel against uh, sexual, uh, uh, widespread sexual abuses in society. So the, the challenge in both situations is how to rebuild, to repair, I, 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 if I may say so, concerning uh, abstract entities such as being, how to rebuild, to repair a political community or a singular person. And uh, 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 I would, uh, uh, my point is that justice can no longer be reduced to principle of distribution of goods or of retribution of acts, but must be considered as an institution that brings back both the, the person, the subject, and the power into being. Uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, first of all, let's, uh, my first point is to, to stay a bit on those two situations. Uh, the first, or, or first of them is crime against humanity, mass atrocity. And mass atrocity um, can be considered in two ways. The first way is to consider uh, as, as massive crimes as a problem but as a problem to be dealt with uh, uh, alternative forms such as uh, uh, the, the one alternative, the one uh, uh, traditional justice uh, provide with. But uh, it's, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough because uh, violence and crimes, the problem with in the very definition of crimes against humanity is that violence proceeds from a policy, a widespread uh, policy. And so it's no longer, it, it cannot no longer, it cannot, uh, it can no longer be considered uh, just as a problem because justice is called for a reassertion 
reassertion of what holds people together. It means it, it requires a political treatment. A political treatment because it's not uh, um, the, the, the mass atrocities are not only a, a fact, they proceed from a perversion of law. Perversion of law uh, because the, 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 if we, we see, for example, what happened in, in a lot of countries today uh, with uh, this, I mean, a lot of, of uh, uh, law which are used as a tool for, uh, for the mass atrocities. So the, the judges themselves are involved and the law is uh, involved, the rule of law is involved to, uh, to uh, encourage and sometimes to, to, to perpetrate those mass, mass atrocities. So, and the, the, the huge difference between the, the mass atrocities and tyranny uh, or dictatorship, which is, which is just a suspension of, of, of law. So, um, because of, of this uh, novelty of, uh, of perversion of the rule of law, a new mission of justice is needed. Uh, um, the one of, of, of protecting politics, politics uh, from its uh, totalitarian germs. It, I think every country, every politics is, has to face the problems of violence. And uh, it's not only a problem for, for a small number of countries, it's a problem from politics itself. And I refer uh, to what Paul Ricoeur said about uh, policy. Uh, and, and by the way, it's a reason why it, we, we cannot say, which is often said and often written, that uh, those mass atrocities are linked um, to individuals and then everybody is violent and everybody could uh, perpetuate some, some such crimes. No, it's a political evil. And, and, and Ricoeur insists on this point, uh, which is very important to me because he, he writes that specific rationality, specific evil, such is a double para paradoxical originality of politics. By the way, I have a problem in translating in English uh, what we say in French, le politique, it's a neutral. It's not politics, it's not policies, it's it's the hardcore of what binds people together. It means uh, a natural, and I, I choose to, to use English polity. Uh, and I don't know if, if it works, but uh, uh, we, we, I, we could say also the political. So, and, and the point of Ricoeur is that uh, um, polity is a specific dimension of human condition. And it's the way we can uh, have access to our humanity. So uh, uh, humanity comes to man by means of the body politic, of the polity. So we have to take that into uh, uh, account in order to understand what's the specific role of justice. When we look now at sexual violences, sexual violences it cannot be, uh, be uh, uh, reduced to uh, uh, suffering and to a psychological approach to, uh, to trauma. Why? Because to me, it has to be understood as an abstraction to being in terms of this uh, opposition. Harm must be approached in terms of life, of life. It's a life prevented, bested, and sometimes killed. So uh, uh, um, what, what I, I saw during years is that sexual abuse committed uh, in youth and uh, um, produces its, uh, uh, prevents the ability to love, prevents the ability to, 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 to live. And victims will not be able to realize the full possibilities of living. Uh, life remains blocked by this act uh, and uh, uh, as if the first abuse anchored uh, uh, an entire life in, its, in this uh, initial uh, violence. 
So sexual violence causes an invisible and infinite inner devastation of the being in terms of uh, I choose. And more precisely, we, we, we could say that there are on one hand the crimes against humanity and the other one crimes against intimacy. What's intimacy? And intimacy must be uh, uh, understood and, and not to be confused with, with uh, privacy, which, which is a, a spontaneous uh, approach. Why? Because obviously rape is a violation of, uh, of consent, but it's also the intrusion of a foreigner, more an enemy in the inner self. A part of oneself, is at war against oneself. And, and this is, uh, which is uh, terrible for, for the victim, because for the victims, is, it is as if the deepest part of the being was uh, invaded uh, by a, a foreigner. And this invasion forces the victim to betray him or herself. So the crime, against intimacy consists of the violent intrusion of uh, in, the, in the closest and more constitutive relationship of the personality. So we have to, 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 to stay a, a moment on what is exactly uh, in, uh, intimacy. It, intimacy is, is, refers to um, the idea that the relationship with oneself passes through others. The inner self, uh, and in French I would say intime, uh, to use, uh, uh, to, to make a substantive of the adjective intime, as opposed to intimité. The inner self is, uh, uh, is not the private space. Uh, it's neither the private space nor the space uh, of the conscience because uh, this uh, intimacy is a package of relations from the, uh, uh, and, and for Augustine, for example, um, he says that uh, uh, the, 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 this deepest place has something to do with the invisible. Uh, it means that um, you, uh, it's the more interior to me than my most interior self. And for Augustine, obviously, it was God. But uh, for us, uh, for, uh, uh, to, to refresh the understanding of the rape, we could say that uh, intimacy is the quintessence of interiority. It's the superlative of interior uh, intimacy. And so it means that uh, the intimacy is a kind of uh, exacerbated uh, depth. So, so the idea is that uh, um, intimacy is a relational concept and not a, a kind of separation, right to separate, separation from, from the other as uh, is the, is, um, is the private uh, space. And, and uh, intimacy shouldn't be confused with interiority, it's different. Um, and there is a, a, a definition by Hegel, which I, I find wonderful. He says that um, uh, close to oneself in the others again, in the other again. So we can, we have access to ourselves through the others. And this definition of intimacy shows the way for justice, because justice the, the, the task of justice consists not only to separate the victim from the perpetrator, which is obviously, which obviously is, but it's also to separate the victims from a part of him or herself uh, in order to, to giving uh, uh, again the energy of, of living uh, and the, uh, the being uh, defined as uh, as uh, energy uh, of combating the non-being. So it's very, very common in, in, in a lot of uh, philosophy. So let's 
let's um, consider now what uh, the role, the new role, and the new place for justice is not a role, only a role, it's also a place. And we should consider there is not two spheres of justice, the public and the private, but there are three spheres, which are the public, the private, and what I, I call the civic, the civic. And I will explain uh, this word later on. So the, 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 if we uh, pay attention to what is uh, the, the demand today of the victims of sexual abuse, it's very interesting to say to see how there is a kind of, of um, to some extent it, it may appear contradictory because uh, to some extent it's uh, it's um, uh, the right to to uh, privacy so the right to uh, to they, they demand the victims demand uh, to grant equal recognition to all sexual orientations. So the right to be let alone on the one hand, but also the demand for justice in terms of justice as an help to, uh, to uh, uh, find back uh, access to others uh, and uh, access to their own being. So uh, that is the, the, what we see in France, but I think it's all over the world, is the idea is that this, this demand for justice is not to demand for justice in the conventional uh, um, criminal way, but for a new justice, a justice less to seek punishment, but to provoke recognition. So to, to do the other way back from having to being and, and a, a demand from uh, uh, on one hand to keeping away on the part of the authorities, but on the other hand, a demand to an intervention of the third party um, for themselves. So there is a, a civic relationship that uh, shouldn't be confused with our traditional way of thinking uh, with the lawyers, understanding uh, of uh, the public sphere, because it unfolds out of sight while posing a collective uh, diamond condition of, of people being. So I, I, I'm, I'm interested in the idea that restorative justice, we, we see restorative justice at the two ends of collective life, the more intimate with, with the mass, uh, massive sexual violence, uh, the more public, which is the, uh, uh, the, um, the uh, traditional justice for, uh, for uh, uh, the city. For polity. And um, by the way, public space has been associated uh, with uh, property and with commerce. And with that commerce, it's only one section of justice and not, uh, not the total, um, total uh, justice. So um, the, the, this category, this third category of civic is autonomous. And, and must be thought as, uh, of as such. Uh, it's a sphere just that justice must take charge or should not be confused with the psychological nor with politics. And this is a, a, a point when I, in, the, in hearing victims of sexual abuse by the church, there is a risk to reduce the problems of victims to uh, psychological trauma, but it's much more than that. It's much more than that because what is what is uh, uh, under attack is again the link, uh, what I call the civic link. Aristoteles would would, would say filia, filia. It means uh, the link between citizens which uh, is not uh, a matter of, of love or friendship. It's a political uh, friendship, we could say. So the protection of the inner self is therefore a political matter, but it doesn't fit very well with the rules of 
criminal law civil justice because uh, of, of uh, we could say that uh, uh, recognition is in social uh, is social in nature. It, the recognition um, um, belongs to being, whereas the rules of criminal justice and civil, even civil justice, are more are more fixed in uh, uh, the problematic of having. So. The, the restorative justice is more uh, in this um, register, is the sphere of civic justice. And it is not the new name for therapeutic uh, justice, but must be thought in terms of ontology. And, and this, uh, I won't stay uh, too long in this uh, uh, question of uh, uh, ontology, but it's, it's the heart of uh, the philosophical heart of my paper, but it's a bit uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, complicated and to um, uh, have no time for that. But I, I would say in a very few uh, uh, words that um, if, we, if we think in, in those terms of being and, and civic justice, we have to, 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 to keep a, a way, we have to, to go beyond uh, all the positions we were uh, very used to, such as the self and the other, uh, the subject and the norm, the private and the public, the freedom and the state, we have to take them in another way uh, in order to rethink the role of law and, uh, uh, and uh, justice. And uh, um, uh, uh, so, uh, from an, 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 uh, an I, I used a lot a book which is for me a, a crucial book and a quite forgotten book from Paul Tillich, who, who was a theologian and a Protestant theologian and a philosopher with a, a German background. And he wrote a book uh, which is called uh, Love, Power, and Justice. And, and it's a very interesting book. Why? Because he, he, he explains why uh, uh, we uh, should uh, understand uh, understand uh, justice as a, a, a real category of being. Every being, says uh, uh, Tillich, wants to increase its uh, uh, power of being in form that include and conquer more non-being and finally towards the forms that include everything. So uh, a being, the, the, the being inevitably leads to a confrontation with other powers, as well as being uh, leads uh, abuse uh, between in relationship, in relationship between, between uh, people, persons. So the, 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 the very ontology of justice is to give form to the encounters of being with another being. Justice from an ontological point of view gives every being its place and therefore assign its limits. It is the form in which the power of being is realized. So uh, the, 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 the major point uh, I would like to, to, to make is that Justice is no longer, shouldn't be considered, no longer considered as a social, social category, far removed from uh, ontological inquiries, which is the case today. But it is a category uh, without which no other ontology is possible. And this it, is, it, it traces back in the very, very long tradition in, in philosophy. Justice is the uniting function in the individual man and in the social group. It is um, the embracing, embracing a form in both cases. Their power, every power of being depends on it. So the being of justice is a condition of the being of the human individual as well as the, uh, of the social group. These three beings are linked together and justice is the linkage. So let's, for my, my uh, last uh, point, let's go to, let's go back to, to restorative justice. Uh, 
And I'd like to, uh, with this distinction between being and having, redefine the function of restorative justice. And perhaps restorative is perhaps not the more, the appropriate adjective. It's too weak. It's too weak uh, uh, to ask justice just to return one to the original position, to restore political, social, or personal links. No, we ask uh, uh, justice not to rebuild, uh, uh, but to generate again the power of the, or, or the power or the subject. Uh, and so, and the, the, we, we, we should speak about, I don't know if it, it is acceptable in English, but I would speak about a regenerating function of justice. Regenerating in terms, in, in a very uh, um, uh, simple meaning of regenerative, regenerate. And uh, what are the way uh, the way used by restorative justice in order to regenerate, to generate again the being of, of people and the being of, uh, of uh, cities, of political cities. First uh, idea is the idea that restorative justice replays uh, the original pact the link between the performance of, of justice and it, uh, its generative function is uh, contained in the German uh, world, Urteil, which gave ordeal in English, uh, uh, ordali in French. It means, Urteil, it means uh, uh, the original sharing, original sharing, uh, which refers to the ontological position of justice. So the idea of, of justice uh, uh, focused on, on being is that this sharing must be reactivated, is reactivated in every trial, and particularly in, in those uh, uh, that involve uh, the, um, the political society. And uh, the idea of redoing and, and replaying the original division as the, the guarantee uh, of uh, uh, this uh, fundamental uh, link. The political pact, the political covenant must be reenacted. Uh, and uh, the, the Jewish ritual uh, plays provide us access to a kind of uh, new uh, value of time, which is a foundational time. In, uh, uh, in my country, in France, today I have a, a major example of that uh, uh, because, uh, you know, there is a, a very a long and high profile trial um, for the terrorist attacks of, of November uh, 2015. And uh, there was um, 130 people killed. And the idea is, um, it's very interesting, this wording. Uh, we used to say in, in France that the terrorists did not want to punish us for what we do, but for, for what we are, for what we are. So it's a reference to being. Uh, and uh, what's the reaction of the, of the liberal society, uh, such as France, is to, uh, to set up a trial, a big trial, uh, in order to give a fair trial to the defendant. But this trial must reactivate the liberal and republican values uh, that we, the French, we all share and that bind us together. So the, uh, and it's very, in, <laughs> from this, um, this, uh, the symbols in the courtroom, there are two statutes uh, from the old Palais de Justice, two statutes, one is an allegory of France, and the other, an allegory of fidelity. Everything is said. So uh, how to be, uh, to, to stay, uh, uh, to, 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 to recall, to remind those uh, shared values who make the, um, the French people. So the regenerative function of justice is symbolically indicated and, and speaks directly to the public uh, and, and through emotions of, of 
of uh, hearing the witnesses and, and every day. So, uh, uh, um, second idea is the idea that the, the main objective of, the, of those trials is recognition, no longer quantification. Recognition as uh, the first objective and not a side effect as it is in, uh, in traditional uh, conventional criminal justice. So the idea is uh, to, um, to organize, uh, to focus um, and how to find, this is a big problem here, is how to find, uh, how to find uh, a public uh, space um, to organize an encounter between the victims and the, and the perpetrator, but in which intimacy must be preserved. Uh, obviously, it's not, it's not possible to set up a public trial such as for, uh, for terrorists, but uh, how, for example, to organize moments of recognition, as we do, by the way, uh, in the French Commission about sexual abuse in the Catholic Church for three years, and, and we just organized meetings, hearings uh, of, of victims and, and quite, uh, quite efficient, uh, efficacité symbolic of those, those uh, meetings. What's recognition as, uh, again, to to quote Ricoeur, uh, recognition is an equivalence that cannot be measured or computed. Recognition is a way to focus on uh, the being of, of uh, your life is as precious as mine. And, and that's, that is what, what is said through recognition. And uh, it's very important, even, even vital, uh, in these new forms of restorative justice for victims of sexual abuse to um, its the restoration of being, the regeneration, and may say so, uh, takes place through ceremonial speech acts. The, the, first, uh, the first capacity of being is a capacity to speak, uh, uh, to restore the capacity to enter into a relationship with others. Um, and uh, uh, it's, uh, um, we could say that a basic trend of restorative justice uh, of the regenerative moment is that it, it proceeds from a symbolic exchange, exchange, access to speech for the victims in exchange for a confession of the perpetrator. And, and uh, it's, it's crucial for victims to break the traumatic silence, to, to, to break, to, to resist silencing. Silencing. So, and, and uh, 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 they want victims want to hear the truth of what they lived uh, through uh, the confessions uh, from the mouth of their aggressor. Confession is, a, is an expression of, of being. So, uh, uh, another thing, which is because I see the time is, is running, um, the idea is how to find. Uh, not non-substitutive, what I call non-substitutive justice. If we look at what the conventional criminal or civil justice uh, is today, uh, it is the result of a lot of substitutions, substitution of the prosecutor uh, and, and the, the, I mean, the prince, we would say, in the, the government, um, substitution of the lawyer for the parties he represents, substitutions of words and, and uh, um, uh, for uh, legal words uh, of, uh, for expressing the emotions of, uh, of people. And um, we could say also substitution of the accused for the society uh, he will purify by his uh, sentence, by its, his expulsions. So, uh, which is very important and is, it's very obvious for uh, me to movement as well as for victims of sexual abuse. They want uh, to, um, they want to 
uh, speak by themselves. They don't want uh, uh, another substitutive uh, justice in, in, in which uh, their, their uh, um, testimonies would be, uh, would be spoken as a, with a, through a spokesperson. So uh, the idea is how to find a way uh, that the victim can be assisted by a lawyer, but not substituted by uh, a lawyer. Uh, another idea uh, is the same with the judge, but I'd like to, 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 to end with the uh, a major idea to me, which is a conversion of violence. It means that uh, restorative justice uh, and regenerative justice proceeds less by expelling violence than by converting it uh, through, the, uh, through uh, the, the moment of justice. And it's, I was very impressed uh, and, and puzzled and interested by the, uh, uh, what they did in South Africa. Uh, the architects of the South African Constitutional Court built uh, the court uh, on um, to, uh, he decided to nestle its walls of the court in those of a prison, and not just any prison, the prison in which uh, the, uh, Gandhi and Nelson Mandela were incarcerated. So the memory of the prison has the effect of a collective oath of not to commit that again. And in, it's a, it's a, a fundamental lesson of Skylus in, in the Oresteia and a, a very important uh, figure of the Erinys, the Erinys that uh, uh, at the end of the, of the play, you remember that the Erinys uh, want revenge and they are not happy with the decision with, uh, of, uh, by Athena. And Athena convinced them to convert from Erinys into Eumenides. It means into the guarantee of uh, peace for the city. So it means, and Hegel uh, spoke a lot about it, uh, and saying uh, Hegel wrote, uh, the Erinys sleep, crime wakes them up. So what the Erinys say, and it is the hardcore of uh, uh, this regeneration and uh, and uh, this uh, restorative justice is violence is still here. It's always there, but it, it cannot be eliminated. And we must th think uh, how to convert uh, this violence into uh, uh, guarantees for the covenant, for the social uh, pact. Okay, so, and it's the same, exactly the same for, for the people. For the people, um, it's uh, a, a, a raped uh, woman or a man uh, cannot think about uh, returning to uh, his or her uh, physiological innocence. Uh, it's not possible. It's a new dimension of life. And this is exactly what uh, justice of being uh, is about, to give a new dimension of life. To, to allow and to organize a restart, a restart a, a thought in terms of energy for the person and not in terms of rights. It's what is said by the, the, the Japanese technique, a technique of kintsugi, is this method of repairing ceramics with gold powder, where the damage is not hidden, but at the opposite, it's highlighted. And this is, this is to me, this process of, of converting uh, violence. So in, to conclude in a, way, in a sentence, I think that I wanted to argue that uh, uh, to me, the idea of restorative justice, of regenerative justice is a major event in the history of justice because it's, uh, it allows us to reconnect with a neglected or even repressed dimension of justice, that, with, that which combines the regeneration of being with the restitution of having. And uh, justice uh, stands on its own two feet 
when it assumes and organize this is itself on the basis of those two dimension, dimensions uh, having and being. Thank you. Sorry, I... Yeah. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. I couldn't find my unmute button. Thank you so much for challenging and thought-provoking lecture. Um, lots of food for thought. Um, so we'll turn now to our two responders. Um, respondents, responders, I'm not sure how you say it. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, so we'll start with Claudia. Um, I'll just introduce her briefly. Claudia, are you here? Because I can't see you on my screen. Yes, I am. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, because it's very small. I can't see who is there. Um, professor Claudia Mazzucato is a professor of criminal law at the Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuoro. <laughs> I can't say that. But in Milan, in Italy. Um, she has been recently appointed uh, by the Italian Minister of Justice among the experts in charge of drafting a comprehensive legislation on restorative justice in criminal matters. Um, she's currently engaged among other things, she does a lot, we all know that, <laughs> but in the Read Justice EU funded project uh, concerning judicial training in restorative justice. She's a restorative justice practitioner herself. Um, and in this capacity, she has facilitated a long process of restorative encounters among victims and former members of armed groups in cases of uh, Italian political violence. Her primary scholarly interests are restorative justice, innovative models of justice, criminal law reform, criminal justice, democracy, law, and humanities. So Claudia, uh, Claudia uh, you have the floor, you have about 10 minutes. Um, yeah, I might make you a little wave uh, about one minute before or something like that, but I don't want to interrupt you, so I hope it's not necessary. <laughs> yes, please do. Well, first I thank uh, the publisher, Estelle, Ivo, the journal, for inviting me to be the responder, respondent uh, to this fascinating lecture. I thank all of you for being here with us, and I am curious to know all your questions and reflections and interactions with our lecture. And I'm very grateful to Antoine Garapon for the fascinating um, lecture he has provided us with. And I must confess that I was so fascinated by your arguments and reflections, Antoine, that I really got trapped uh, into the originality and um, the innovative perspective of your thoughts. And in order to play my role of responder or respondent, I had to detach myself from my being a restorative justice supporter, practitioner and scholar, and turn to my having a legal background in criminal law. I will use uh, Antoine's categories of having and being, of having as the field, as he just said, of objectivity, formality, rationality, I would say solidity, and of being as the field of subjectivity, informality, emotions, probably also irrationality and fluidity. But on the having side, I also see facts, acts, actions. Whereas on the being side, there are actors. Republican, democratic, constitutional criminal justice systems and criminal law have problems with being. Being is outside their comfort zone. A democratic, republican, constitutional criminal justice systems wish to be fact and act based. In principles, in principle, no one should be accused, tried, convicted, punished 
for who they are, for how they lived, but only for what they do. So no status criminal justice is admissible in a democratic constitutional um, system. But this said, um, there are areas of turbulence where um, this fact-based criminal law, act-based criminal law uh, interacts with being, and these are the areas of the age of criminal responsibility, uh, the issue of guilt, culpability, responsibility. Um, in the um, representation of Lady Justice, Lady Justice is blindfolded uh, to cover her eyes from the status of people, from the being, from the biographies of people, the narratives, the stories, the emotions of both those who judge and those who are judged. But despite these efforts, um, I've never seen any fact under trial, but only persons under trial. I've never seen a fact being punished, nor an act being punished, but persons being punished. It seems to me, thanks to this uh, double category, having been at avoir, that punitive justice, be it retributive or preventive punitive justice, confuses having and being. It affirms to start with acts and facts, to be act and fact based, but immediately it moves towards persons, towards being, and it works coercively on people with the overt or covert aim to make them change so to make them become different. In other words, to correct them. And this movement from acts, facts, having towards people being punished or corrected, um, from this movement, I see the reason why maybe uh, conventional punitive justice is passive. Um, criminal justice, criminal law, conventional ones are actually full of justice related emotions, vengeance, fear, perceptions. We all know how uh, victim impact statements have increased the punitive outcomes of criminal trials. Panel Populism, enemy criminal law are the extreme examples of too much sort of being put in a, a justice system that pretends to be related to having. And also those forms of criminal justice, criminal law, criminal justice systems that want to counter, combat or fight a criminal phenomenon. Conventional criminal justice seems to begin with having, but it seems to me that it ends up with being. Whereas restorative justice seems to me a relations-based justice system. It begins with an offense, a harm to someone, and it is encounter-based. It begins with the suffering of the injustice, uh, the suffering that the injustice or injustices provoke. And thanks to the potential, potentially transformative nature of the encounter, it results in new actions taken, in taking actions. 
This is why, to me, restorative justice is an active form of justice. Restorative justice, we may say, begins with being, is related with being, as Antoine so beautifully described, but it ends up with having apologies, reparation, commitments, engagements, learning from the experience, reforming what went wrong. What are the risks of um, this relations-based justice in criminal matters? And I'm about to finish. The risk is the loss of safeguards, the risk of moralization, the risk of turning restorative justice into a new form of retributive justice under a, another name, but not another quality. And the antidotes I've see, I see to prevent the risk, these risks from occurring are clearly set by uh, Antoine in his beautiful lecture. First, the role played by the law in criminal justice, by the law seen as a relations-based tool itself, and as a framework of guarantees, uh, so a law that protects, not a law that controls. Second, the role of the civic as uh, explained and described by Antoine. Third, the voluntariness of the processes versus the coercive nature of the conventional criminal justice. And um, fourth, um, I would say the humility of criminal, of the humility of restorative justice versus the triumphalism of conventional uh, justice so well presented in those statutes of um, st uh, um, statutes of statues sorry of lady justice that are almost omnipresent in uh, court room buildings uh, humility uh, is linked to the altruistic dimensions of restorative justice versus the nature of um, um, conventional criminal justice, which seems too often to be the justice of the Avengers. So I would conclude my brief reflections with these other two images that I put uh, beside having and being the curved sign of the question mark as a typical, um, I would say, um, image of the nature of restorative justice that works with questions more than with answers, uh, compared to the vertical sign of the exclamation point, which is so similar to me to the Lady Justice with a sword and the scale. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Claudia, for these insightful comments, responses, and reflections. Um, I will now turn, last but not least, uh, to Kent. Kent, I can't see you on my screen, but I know you were there. Yep. Yep, okay. Um, so uh, it's my pleasure to um, introduce uh, to you Professor Kent Roach. Uh, he's Professor of Law at the University of Toronto in Canada. He was volume lead for the legacy volume of Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission for Residential School for Indigenous Children. Uh, his most recent book is uh, entitled Remedies for Violations of Human Rights, a two-track approach to supranational and national law published by Cambridge University Press this year. Um, Kent, I will give you the floor. And like for the other speakers, I, I, I will try not to interrupt you, but only if you really abuse your time. <laughs> well, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, 
uh, Stel. And it's really an honor uh, to be asked to respond to such an insightful and groundbreaking lecture. And, and thank you, Antoine, for the lecture, but also for sharing with us uh, a preliminary written text. I have to say that as I was reading the text, it really reminded me of uh, a lecture uh, many years ago that I'm sure all of us gathered uh, here today uh, have read, and that is Niles Christie's Conflicts as Property, which was first given as a lecture uh, at the University of, of uh, she Sheffield, and of course now has become uh, one of the landmark uh, 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 essays in restorative justice. Uh, like Professor Christie, Antoine Garipo, uh, uh, uh essay it, 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 uh, manifests the idea that what happens in the state justice system is alienating and expropriates disputes. Uh, but in my view, Judge Garapon goes even further uh, than Professor Christie by relating uh, um, uh, 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 what is happening not simply to the definition and processing of disputes, although that is important and I will return to that, but to the two concepts of having and being. In short, as I understand his argument, the state justice system has developed with money and quantity, and it is related to a system of having that is fundamental to capitalist and neoliberal societies. Uh, uh, I understand uh, Judge Garapon is saying the state justice system has forgotten about being and the need for individuals and groups to have their being both as individuals and as members of various groups recognized and respected. Um, this is a powerful and for me, uh, very uh, appealing concept. Uh, I also compared it uh, to uh, the concept that we often hear uh, about in human rights scholarship, and that is the idea of human dignity. And to me, uh, the concept of being is much more appealing than human dignity because it really speaks uh, to our specificities uh, uh, as well as our basic um, uh, being as human, human beings. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take up uh, Ivo's invitation at the start and relate this uh, to some things that, are, that have happened in my country that continue to happen and also uh, 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 some of uh, my own work. Uh, so first, um, I think that uh, Judge Garapon's uh, uh, essay uh, can help us make sense of the ongoing debates in Canada about attempted genocide of Indigenous people through residential schools that were designed uh, not really to educate but to assimilate them, uh, and that were also sites for hor horrific forms of abuse, physical and sexual, of, uh, of, uh, of children. Uh, the response uh, to uh, that abuse is, I think, typical of the frailties of the having system of our uh, state uh, justice system. So there were uh, criminal prosecutions, uh, perhaps uh, too few, uh, uh, and there were class actions. So the issue is, what is the quantity? What is the quantity of damages? what is the quantity of punishment. And I think that, you know, the, 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 the fact that anyone who has gone through that, uh, by definition, uh, money or years imprisonment uh, is not uh, going to uh, um, 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 satisfy them. Uh, the national class action uh, was settled, uh, and of course, you know, uh, uh, the legal system is a capitalist system, and a lot of it was about the lawyers uh, uh, getting their money and negotiating how much uh, the various governments and religious orders who ran the school uh, paid. But after those people were out of the room, the survivors said, we want more. 
we want to take from the funds that would ever otherwise be paid to us from the churches and mostly from the government. We want commemoration and we want a truth and reconciliation commission. So to me, these were instruments of being instruments about affirming that despite these life altering uh, traumas uh, that the survivors went through, that they wanted a uh, historical record uh, of what happened and the consequences to them. Uh, and they also wanted art and literature and all other forms of commemoration. And, and to me, why I find the concept of being so striking is it really uh, speaks to my whole self and not simply uh, that part of me uh, that is a lawyer. Now, some academic critics, uh, and obviously I'm, you know, as, as having worked on it, I'm partial, uh, but some of the academic critics of the Canadian uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission really seem to me to criticize it for not being like the South African uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which unlike the Canadian, was tied partly to a transaction. Uh, related to amnesty. That wasn't part of the Canadian um, 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 uh, 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 com, com mission. But I do think that the Canadian Commission has uh, contributed uh, partly through national events that allowed people to speak and uh, to express themselves in various ways uh, to a regenesis of being uh, uh, with respect uh, to, uh, to um, uh, 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 the, the, the trauma. I would just quickly want, uh, uh, though, uh, raise a couple of questions, uh, and I'm sure that there will be more from all of you. Is the recognition of being in our state justice system, is it essentially always on the defensive? So one way of looking at victim impact statements is that they allow uh, the victim to uh, uh, establish his or her being. Uh, and, uh, but, but is it, is it mainly done uh, in a defensive way? Uh, similarly, um, what about what I've called the new political case? Uh, the new political case for me is an idea where you have an accused and the state, but you also have a group of victims or potential victims. It can be a police shooting of a racialized uh, person. Again, it seems to me that in the new political case, uh, what the group affected as uh, either directly as victims or as potential victims of say police violence, that group is asking for recognition of their being, something that will be measured in the having system of state justice uh, through whether there is a conviction, whether it's for murder or for manslaughter, and how many years uh, uh, is given. Uh, so again, uh, this suggests to me that this is uh, 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 very much um, uh, um, uh, a defensive battle and one that perhaps can't be won. Finally, um, I want to, add, uh, to, to, to end on a somewhat uh, happier note. Uh, Judge Garapon talks about the importance of ceremonial speech acts, uh, and I made me think of apologies. So is it something that the justice system can get closer to recognizing being if it sets up incentives to allow uh, defendants, uh, civil or criminal, uh, 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 incentives to engage in uh, genuine uh, acts uh, of recognition of being uh, before we get to the issue of quantification of acts and guilt. And that, of course, uh, uh, can, be, can and should be considered to be a mitigating factor at sentence. And here uh, I would join with 
Claudia's uh, very interesting comments that sentencing is always uh, uh, about being. It isn't uh, about the acts. So uh, to go back to Niles Christie and to conclude, I think that uh, uh, Judge uh, Garapone's uh, lecture uh, uh, should uh, uh, join uh, the pantheon of, of uh, uh, truly transformative uh, work in restorative justice along with Professor Christie. And I also think that perhaps borrowing from Professor Christie, we need to think about how non-adjudicative forums uh, 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 may be the most authentic site for recognizing and regenerating um, uh, being. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ken, so much for this. Um, okay, while uh, I leave you a few minutes to put down your thoughts in the chat or let me let us know that you have questions. Maybe I turn back to Antoine and see if he wants to yes. reply to this. Um, yes. you know, well, you're welcome to. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much for these two very, uh, very interesting comments. I, I will, I will uh, start with the Kent one because it's, uh, 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 yes. Um, I, I'm very interested about what you said about the defensive, the defensor, and I'd like to, to, to speak about another experience I have in common with Claudia, which is the, um, how to apply this idea of uh, uh, civic justice, of recognition to defendant, to criminals. And I, I do a lot of group de parole, um, with uh, young terrorists, people in in uh, um, in prison, in jails, and I spend a couple of hours and I do a lot of things with them. And uh, uh, tomorrow I will I will have lunch with well, okay. And I'm thinking in ap applying the same idea of uh, uh, it's it seems a bit bizarre of recognition of terrorists. In, in terms of, okay, and if the problem with you was uh, an identity problem and the lack of recognition, obviously you committed uh, very, very uh, serious offenses and you, sh you must be sentenced for that. You must be punished for that, obviously. But punishment won't uh, solve anything. And what I, I, I understand in those groups who are spending hours just talking, first is the, the great respect they paid to me as a judge. But why as a judge? Why do you spend so much time with us? We, we are just poor men. It's, we are not interested. We, why are, you so, uh, uh, are we so interesting for you? And there is a kind of, of implicit recognition process, which is very important for them. I don't know which, which uh, Claudia, if you would have some ideas about, about that. And this is first answer. The second answer is, I, and I, I fully agree with what uh, Claudia said, uh, we, we shouldn't uh, think about restorative justice in terms of separate forms of justice. There are separate ideas of justice, uh, aims of justice, horizons of justice, which is, which is different. So there, there, there is obviously a, 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 being, a, a being dimension in ordinary criminal justice. And this is, this, this is the opposition rigor made between equivalence and uh, surabundance of, of, in his terms, it was of grace, obviously. But he says that in, 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 a, in a civilized system of justice, they must have two dimensions. The first, of, uh, first dimension is to stick on the equivalences and, and to, to prices and what is the right reaction, the just reaction to an act. So we could say the penal price for an act, okay? But if justice, justice on courts stick to this dimension only, it's not justice. And, and something uh, uh, additional must be offered to defendant. And uh, 
uh, even for people like terrorists, which are extremely, extremely dangerous for society. And the danger will disappear if we think in terms of being. Okay, that's a, it's a just a, uh, uh, to follow on, on your thoughts. And, and um, to me, it's, it, uh, I'm, I'm not at the end of this, uh, uh, of this idea. I'm just at the beginning, actually, because it's, it's, it comes from impressions I had uh, working with uh, uh, victims of sexual abuse, with terrorists, with, with people in, in, in countries. And I, 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 the convergence of, of those situations, very, very different situations uh, appeared to me and, and, uh, and inspired me the, the, this, uh, yes, this, this way of thinking. Do you want to have a few words uh, to respond to Claudia or are you okay? Yeah, to, to, to Claudia, yes, I, I think that the, this, Obviously, as a judge and as a human rights activist, I'm very, very attached to, to the rule of law, to the presumptions, presumption of innocence. But uh, you know what happened in France? In our commission, we discovered a, 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 a huge number of victims, and it was a number. So it was quantity, and, and we, we just established there are uh, two, uh, something like, it's an estimation, but there, there are some uh, 220,000 uh, victims for in, uh, 60 years in France. And we were, and I think still French society and, and the Catholic Church are overwhelmed by that. What can do? What can we do? It it it's almost impossible to be uh, up to it. To be up to this number, the solution must be must be. Uh, and and I would I would say that the, perhaps the solution uh, is related to the very being of the church. I'm not I'm not uh, joking with with terms, but uh, and. What a church is today in a liberal society such as France, and and the, the so there is what 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 was interesting in our commission. It was both the quantitative aspects of our our work, and which which demand to some extent a, a substantive and existential answer to this phenomenon. Okay, thank you. Um, you're very welcome to put uh, questions in the chat. I know Ivo had a couple, so I'll give the floor to Ivo first. Well, thank you, um, Antoine, Claudia, and Ted. <clears throat> well, there are many things coming up uh, listening to you all. Um, maybe just one or two comments or questions from my side, if I may. Um, and, and yeah. <clears throat> The first thing is about your, your very interesting thinking about um, political city and, 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 and your uh, idea of the political level, le, pol le politique, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. le politique. Um, okay, that, that is interesting for us, people working in the field of restful justice. We are very much used to terminology of the community. And you have not used that word, I think, um, if I remember well. No. And maybe you have your good reasons eh, to not to use the word community, but to think about society or the collectivity um, in, in, in another way that might be different with our understandings of uh, community. So could you elaborate a little bit on, 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 on that maybe? That could be very helpful for us, I think. And my second question, if I may, is um, about the the distinction between procedural justice and substantive justice, as we know it in criminal law uh, um, and criminal procedure, shouldn't we, thinking about being and the importance of being, shouldn't we in state law and maybe also in restorative justice, uh, revitalize much more the procedural elements uh, um, of, of, um, of criminal law? 
So um, when you go back, I think, to in, in, the, in the far history to the Greek, and uh, maybe we can also learn something about the, 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 the role of procedures there um, in, 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 in dealing with, with, with offenses or crimes. Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, yes. Okay. So should I answer now, Estelle? Yeah. 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 Two very in interesting uh, questions. The first, you know, there is um, the, the most difficult word, words to translate into another language are the more common. I think that perhaps 90% uh, 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 of politicists, um, uh, when they study France, they just don't understand what the term ETA means. ETA is something very difficult to understand for a non-French, for a foreigner, because it's a, a certainly not government, uh, not the executive. It's a symbolic envelope, an invisible envelope, which gather all French people together. And it has something to do with uh, uh, the uh, deep uh, Roman Catholic culture and, and the invisible um, body of, of Christ and so on. So it's a, it's a very difficult translate into English, actually. And uh, the terms community is very tricky because in French language, community, uh, a lazy way would, would give a communauté. That community is, 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 is totally different, is used in a quite negative and pejorative way in France. It means separatism, people who want to live together uh, and, and, and away from the, the state, precisely. So the best translation would be in French many, many times to translate uh, community by society, which is, which is not society. La société, uh, it, it means in French, community. So, uh, so um, um, the translation of um, le politique, I, I can send you, Ivo, uh, so, uh, a notice of a translation uh, of uh, the work of Paul Ricoeur. And, and the, 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 the translator from Oxford University Press uh, wrote uh, the following thing. Throughout this essay, particularly in the second section, the author contrasts polity, le politique, with politics, la politique. By polity, the author, Ricoeur, intends uh, the ideal sphere of political organization and historical rationality. By politics, the empirical and concrete manifestations of this ideal sphere, the sum total of the means employed to implement the ideal sphere of polity. So uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting because it has something to do with, with culture. And, and uh, uh, I, I, didn't, I do not uh, find the right translation uh, of, uh, of the term uh, of uh, le polity. But uh, by, uh, to, to the, your second question, coming to your second question, I, I should recommend uh, the a work of a French anthropologist about this issue, which is called uh, Le Prix de la Vérité. It was translated into English in The Price of Truth. And it's an it's it's old work about, uh, a major work about the gift and counter gift. Uh, in, in, and he says, uh, liberal societies are very poor uh, in a symbolic, uh, uh, very symbolically poor, we could say, because, because of that, they only can deal with uh, quantities, with grants. And he has a very interesting, um, uh, let's say, I could, I could read it uh, for you about uh, the idea of uh, what is out of price? What is priceless? And he, he, he makes a, a, a correspondence between the death penalty in the US and the idea that the US eat at the same time the, the, the country in which the, the quantification of life is, uh, is more advanced. So, 
uh, um, I think this idea of quantification and the, the idea of is that everything can be uh, proceduralized, I would say, um, um, is blocked, uh, 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 is uh, face a, a, a wall of this issue of the symbolic debt and the issue of being. I don't know if I answered your, your question, Ivo. You're muted, Ivo. No. Um, yes, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I think we should elaborate a little bit more about the second one, but I think, yeah, I, I don't understand you, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. I think there are other questions as well. In the meantime, we have Tim who would like to come in. Tim? Uh, thank you very much, Estelle. Um, I find your I find your um, presentation very very interesting and thought provoking. There was one area I was particularly interested in and didn't fully understand, and I'd love you to elaborate a little bit. And it's this notion uh, about the conversion of violence. If I noted it down right, you sort of the conversion of violence through the moment of justice. And you went on to say that violence is always here. It cannot be eliminated, but it can be converted. I wonder, could you say a little bit more about what you mean by that um, in a sort of concrete way? Thank you. Well, OK. Um, uh, how to put it? It's uh, this idea of conversion of violence uh, proceeds from, uh, I make my uh, dissertation on the Jewish ritual uh, from an anthropological And it, to me, it's obvious that there are two dangers for, for the, the, the criminal trial. The first one is political influence, obviously. The second one is a kind of uh, scapegoat, uh, scapegoat, uh, scapegoatism, I would say, in terms of uh, that uh, through ritual, society puts uh, much more to the shoulders of the definite than it really did. So I, I think that the substitutive uh, substitution is, is part of uh, it's part of uh, uh, of the problem of the criminal uh, trial, the formal criminal trial, and. It's a long, long idea in, in French literature, for example. So the, the idea of conversion of violence, I, I, uh, um, uh, we have to face, and it's exactly the same today with the Catholic Church, by the way. So it's not enough to punish some of, uh, of uh, the criminals, not enough to, to jump to the, the day after and to think about what should we, uh, how should we rebuild and reform the country. The first thing is to face and to look at the violence uh, of crimes. And it's a necessary step for a rebuilding uh, uh, a society. And it's, uh, 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 it shows that violence is much closer to us than we think. And it shows that violence is uh, the big problem and could be part of the solution. More precisely, looking at uh, violence uh, is uh, the beginning of, of, uh, of thinking about solutions. And we, we shouldn't escape this moment of looking at the evil, uh, to, to put in, 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 in moral terms. And, and today, it's a debate today um, uh, with the Catholic Church. Let's, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quotation of, of Anna Arendt. She says uh, in uh, Ekman at Jerusalem, she says, let's see together what we've done together. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it means that violence have to be domesticated more than excluded, more than uh, uh, eradicated from, from uh, uh, our history. And we have to, uh, uh, the, the, the ideal, I think it's a way, it's the deepest 
meeting meaning of of uh, uh, it's it's a major it's a major conclusion of, of the play of Scylus is a play that we have to to uh, look together and to try to understand what are the the what what is violence and to rely on this to 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 find solutions i don't know if i i answered your questions um <clears throat> yeah yeah thanks very much and i think i can see a lot of connections with the restorative mission of no. look, looking together at the reality of the harm as opposed to the breach of the law mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, yeah. Okay, hey, I have Lauder. Lauder, you wanted to come in? Lauder, you have your hand yes, up. Yep. I had to unmute myself yep. and I will start the video so that you can me. Okay. I apologize for being late. Uh, so I missed the first 20 minutes of your intervention, Antoine, due to circumstances is too long. But so I excuse. But what I've learned from what you did is this, again, this dichotomy of the traditional criminal justice approach uh, organized by the state, uh, the havings, it's rational, it's logical, and so on. This dichotomy of this kind and then restorative justice, which is described as emotional, subjective, more sensitive to what real, more close to the real life as a, uh, others would say, and so on. This opposition of this dichotomy is in fact a, a, a basso continuo in the restorative justice literature. And I think you have added a very nice, you have added a very nice um, um, violin to this basso continuo. But I would say for, from a, a kind of more critical point of view, we know that already. I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm simplifying now. Uh, 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 we know that already, but what we need is precisely the, the answer to the question, how do we combine? How do we, because we cannot, we cannot get rid of the state. We cannot get rid of power, of state power, unless I'm wrong. Maybe you have another view of, uh, of the world but I'm afraid that we always will have to deal with state power to decide at certain moments and so on. How do we combine this with the emotional, the subjective, the and so on? Uh, that's my question. And I would like to hear how you, how you Antoine, think about that. I'm sure you have ideas about that because well, you are <laughs> close. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, um, it's a very good question, and it's it, uh, it yes, it obliges me to. I think that the, the the good thing with concepts, with ideas, that you can go a bit further, thanks to them, and the the the, the concept of being and the concept of, which is our being. It's a very, very it's a major concept in philosophy, and the concept of having quantification. It's much more for for anthropologists, but to, to put this very old problem, I fully agree with you, it's a, it's, a, it's a basso continuo, I fully agree, but to put concepts and, and to, to make the linkage with the, uh, the, 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 the philosophical tradition is, uh, um, can, can help us. How to combine? How to combine? I think that there is no many, many ways to combine. And uh, on uh, the philosophical ground, I see mainly two, uh, two thinkers which uh, try to think, to think again, it's a, it's a problem of ideas, not, not, not of practice. It's Paul Ricoeur on one hand in Amour et Justice, which was translated into English, Amour et Justice, uh, which is a major book to me. And the second one is the one of Paul Tillich, of uh, uh, pouvoir 
amour et justice. Uh, love, sorry. Love, power and justice. Love, power and justice. And which we, what, what I like to do and what I propose in a very, very rough way today is uh, to, to deepen at, uh, at the, the, the philosophical debate of those two thinkers, for example, and to, to, to look back to the, uh, the, the tradition, the philosophical tradition, Hegel, Aeschylus, uh, and, and uh, many others, um, uh, many others <coughs> with this key of having and being. And I, I uh, for example, I think that Paul Tillich should be rehabilitated. Oh, excuse me to interrupt you. I don't know the second author. The second author was, was if you allow me, I can... Ricoeur, Paul Ricoeur, I know, of course. And yes, let me see. I know I... it, but the, the second one, not. I will write it in the chat if you want to. Yeah, yeah. This book, yes, okay. yeah. This book, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This book. Love, Power and Justice. Okay, from Paul Tillich. And ah, it, Paul Tillich, kind of. Tillich, yes. And it was translated into French. Uh, and it's, it's very difficult to find in I French. Don't know it. But, yeah, I don't know it. but the problem with Tillich is that he makes a very bright uh, demonstration. But the problem is, he is a theologian. So at the end, he speak of creative justice, and I cannot follow him on this uh, on this road, obviously, because it's it's a matter of religion; it's no longer a matter of, of philosophy, and that's the reason why I try to combine uh, the French uh, French philosophical tradition with Claude Lefort, all people uh, uh, thinking about le politique. To, in order to understand, uh, to, to, to understand the, uh, uh, the uh, um, constitutive role of justice. And, and so to take it very seriously. And there are a lot of, of, uh, a lot of people um, from uh, of structuralists of Lacanian, such as Paul, Pierre Legendre. Uh, it, it, there are quite a lot of authors in, in, in France about this idea that the law uh, and justice have a, uh, has a constitutive function to, to people. So it's, it's a way to, to uh, and as, uh, as that's what I wanted to do tonight, uh, is to, to, to put restorative justice, uh, to, 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 to find the link between restorative justice, with, which is a, a professional and, and a lot of a lot of us we try to to practice restorative justice with a more a broader debate in philosophy okay thank you okay um claudia and kent i you're obviously very welcome to come into the discussion as well so if you have anything any comments on Tim or Lode or Ivo's ideas, you're also very welcome. For all the others, of course, let me know if you have any questions. Um, the floor is open. May I respond to uh, Lode uh, in light of what Antoine has said? Um, as you know, Lode, I think that the legal thought should be more and more incorporated in the um, studies on restorative justice, because restorative justice helps us rethink the role of uh, the legislation. <laughs> um, if the state uh, and the legislative, legislative power are binded to protect people, and this is what they do on one side, for instance, through constitutions and uh, pro legal provisions on rights, subjective rights. But this is also what they do with criminal law. Um, and I underline the criminal, not the penal. So again, I think that the combination works quite well um, if, we think of the law as the rules of conduct of conduct 
instead of uh, the rules forbidding and punishing, but the rules that help us see how to behave respect respectfully towards the unknown, the unknown others. And I would love Antoine to, as such a great um, legal scholar, judge, uh, legal thinker, um, how does he see the role of the law in criminal, in, sorry, in restorative justice, in criminal matters? Antoine, do you want to? Thank you for making my question clear, Claude. <laughs> Yes, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, how could I say that? I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm at the same time a, a judge, so I applied, I applied in my life, and 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 now with uh, I, I chair the commission for reparations for the the, the victims of uh, sexual abuse in, in the church. So I'm, uh, and we have to quantify, obviously, but it's a it's a problem of order. Uh, 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 of order. First uh, talking, first recognition, first uh, 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 relationship, and then uh, quantification would take its full meaning. So uh, the, the perhaps um, we pay too much attention to law and not enough to justice. Uh, uh, to justice in terms of uh, of uh, what is exactly, but for example, I take the example of reparations I'm working on, and I wrote a book about uh, is it possible to repair history? And I am amazed there are very, very few uh, philosophical pieces about reparation. Why, uh, uh, why which is the basic of, of, uh, of the, the, the criminal a trial. Why a sum of money, why a, a certain amount of money do we pair a, a wrongdoing? Uh, what, what's the reason for that? Uh, uh, we, we focus on equivalence, but my point is not equivalence, is the, the very meaning of reparation. And, and uh, and, and to, uh, I just put a quotation in French, I couldn't translate it into English, but there are the wonderful uh, pieces from uh, Georg Zeman on, on money, and, and he, he, which explains the role of, uh, quite, we explains, yes, uh, the, the, the very meaning of, uh, of reparation, but the, we, we should have more pieces, more, more thinking on, on how to repair Kent, for, let's take the, 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 the example of Canada, how, it's, how to think reparations of, of history. And uh, uh, it's, it's a huge issue. I have some ideas uh, about that because I think it's impossible to repair the past without thinking of the, uh, uh, of the, the uh, present as a, as a narrative totality, I would say. Uh, that is the idea that uh, 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 a uh, 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 political covenant is a narrative, and it it, it, it uh, tends to put a, a, a totality through a narrative, and it's a, it's a major issue for uh, is and and it's, the reparation is always to repair. Um, une totalité symbolique, I will say, I would say in French, I don't know if it makes sense in English, but uh, it's exactly the, uh, exactly the same problem with, uh, again, with terrorists, how to redefine a, a political covenant in terms of a common narrative for French people and, and for the France today. So, uh, I don't know if I answer your question, Claudia, but the law is important, but justice, we, we should pay more attention to the idea of justice in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, concepts. Uh, and, and again, the, there are many, many black holes in, in our uh, way of thinking. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we've come to the end of 
our time. Uh, there is a comment by Kirtjan who had to leave, but I'll let you read this on your own time. Uh, I think it's relevant to the discussion just now. Um, if you'll agree, I'll thank you all for coming. It was wonderful to have you all here uh, for your contributions and reflections. Um, I want to thank particularly, of course, uh, Antoine, Claudia and Kent for accepting our invitation. Um, our publisher for uh, supporting us in this endeavor, uh, as always. And of course, Ivo and Marlies, my co-hosts today. Um, to finish, uh, just a reminder that this recording will be sent out uh, to all of you who've registered and should be available on the uh, YouTube channel of the publisher. Uh, as announced, also Antoine uh, now has to finalize his paper and send it to us so it can be published in the journal soon. No pressure though, but we'll be, we'll be after you. <laughs> um, thank you very much. It's Friday evening, so go and enjoy, at least in Europe, um, go and enjoy a nice glass of wine. And I wish you all a very good weekend and very good and happy Christmas and holidays when it comes. And hopefully 2022 is in person again. So hope to see you all then. Thank you. Bye.